What do you get when you send a billion dollars worth of NASA hardware on a collision course for a bowl of ice? Elcross, the Lunar Observation and Sensing Satellite. Today on Planetary Television. Elcross, or Lunar Crater Observation and Sensing Satellite, was searched for water ice by sending its spent upper stage Centaur rocket to impact a permanently shadowed polar crater. The satellite will fly into the plume of the dust left by the impact and measure the properties before also colliding with the lunar surface. The L Cross team selected Scabius A based on a set of conditions that include proper debris plume and illumination for visibility from Earth, a high concentration of hydrogen, and mature crater features such as a flat floor gentle slopes, and the absence of large boulders. The this, this selection of KBSA was a result of vigorous debate within the lunar science community that include review of the latest data from the Earth-based observatories and our fellow lunar mission Kingoya, Chandra-1, and the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, said Anthony Calipret, l -Cross project scientist and principal investigator at NASA Ames Research Center in Moffett Field, California. The team is looking forward to the impacts and the wealth of information this unique mission will bring. A caber of professional astronomers using many of the Earth's most capable observatories is helping maximize the scientific return from the l -Cross impacts. These observatories include the Infrared Telescope Facility and Keck Telescope in Hawaii the Magdalena Ridge and Apache Ridge Observatories in New Mexico, and the MMT Observatory in Arizona, the newly refurbished Hubble Telescope, and the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, among others. These and several other telescope, uh, telescopes participated in the LCOS observation net campaign will provide observations from different vantage points using different types of measurements techniques said Jennifer Heldman, lead for the l -Cross Obser observation campaign at Ames. These multiple observations will complement the l -Cross spacecraft data to help o determine whether or not water is ice exists on in KBSA. During a media briefing today, September 11, 2009, Daniel Andrews, l -Cross project manager at Ames, provided a mission status update in indicating the spacecraft is healthy and has enough fuel to successfully accomplish all mission objectives. Andrew also announced the dedication of the L-Cross mission to the memory of legendary news anchor Walter Cronkite, who provided coverage of NASA's mission from the beginning of America's manned space program to the age of the space shuttle. Dad would sure be proud to be part, if just in name, of getting humans back to the moon and beyond, said Chip Cronkite, son of the famed news anchor. Elcross mission was selected in April 2006 as a mission manifested with the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Both missions launched on June 18, 2009 on an Atlas V from Cape Canaveral, Florida. The Elcross mission and science operations are manned at Ames. The l -Cross team has long been preparing for its final destination on the moon, and we are looking forward to October 9, 2009, Andrew said. The next 28 days will undoubtedly be very exciting. Now, this is the opportunity for amateur astronomy groups to prepare to set up events for this impact. As indicated, the impact will be in the KBSA crater in the south polar region of the moon. Anyone wishing uh, reference or in, any information on uh, these, this impact or where it will be best viewed, uh, please follow the link that I have on the screen at this time. Uh, again, this is your opportunity to see something once in a lifetime. It is said that uh, Telescopes with at least a 10 to 12 inch di uh, diameter should be able to see it. 
I personally will be photographing uh, the event, so hopefully I can bring that, bring those pictures, and possibly see some plumes uh, to you um, after the impact. This was Errol Coder for Planetary Television. Thank you for joining me. As always, keep looking up.